Hey viewers, Nick Carver here. You know, I get asked about my 6x17 panorama camera all the time. It's partly because it's an unusual camera, very few people are using it, but it's largely just that it's so damn pretty. It's such a good looking camera, so when people see it, they really want to know all about it. Uh, so I thought for all the gear junkies out there, I'd take you through my camera bag and, and show you what it's all about. Uh, but before we do that, I want to talk about the actual camera bag itself. So uh, I use uh, this camera backpack made by a company called Renaissance Phototech. And uh, unfortunately, they have since closed their doors. It's a very small company based out of the Midwest, run by a super nice guy by the name of Bruce. And um, he basically took these uh, true backpacking backpacks. So with a proper harness, proper ventilation, they're all custom fit to your spine length and your waist and everything and they're built like backpacking backpacks because that's what they actually are. Um, and what that means is they are super comfortable. Uh, it feels like you're carrying way less weight than you actually are when you're, when you're um, hauling one of these. But like I said, unfortunately, he's closed his doors. He's retired, which is well-deserved, but uh, it's a bummer we won't see these on the market anymore. Um, but let's take a look inside. So, Nice thing about this backpack is the all the gear is contained in its own compartment that has a second zipper. So this thing uh, is double sealed from sand and all the other elements. But uh, got my uh, dark cloth first. Um, this is actually made for a 4x5 camera, but uh, it just barely fits over the 6x17. Um, but let's jump right into the camera first. So the camera itself is a uh, Shenhao TFC 617A. Uh, it's a wonderful camera. It's very well designed. It's an expensive camera. Uh, when I bought this thing, it was uh, one heck of an investment for me at the time, and it still would be today. But uh, I hemmed and hawed over buying it for a long time, and then um, the price kept going up. So these things only get more expensive, and I figured I, I better pull the trigger while the price is uh, relatively affordable. But um, it's a view style camera, so it's like a 4x5 or an 8x10 you know, older style film camera. And uh, just like those cameras, you have uh, focusing. So you have this uh, knob here for rack, to bring the, the rack forward, rack it forward. And uh, then another knob, we can loosen it here. And then uh, I can rack the uh, film plane, the film standard backwards. And this is how you focus and match your focal length. So at full extension, it's like 310 millimeters or so. Uh, which is huge. So that allows me to use a 300 millimeter lens, which is one of the main reasons I got this camera is it had such a long extension, I was able to use longer focal lengths. Um, but as far as view camera goes, this thing is all tricked out. It's got basically every movement you could want on both the film and uh, lens standard. So I'll show you what I mean. So looking at the camera here, first and foremost, uh, the front film or the front uh, lens standard, we have rise, we have fall, and a whole lot of rise at, at that, so it can go real high. Uh, not only that, we have tilt, so I can tilt the film plane, and that allows me to utilize the shine flug principle if I want to try to expand my depth of field. Uh, and the back film standard has almost the same movements. It only The only one it's missing is fall, but it does have rise, so that helps with composition. And it also has tilt, just like the front. So th those movements alone are hugely useful when you're doing landscape photography. And the fact that both of them move that way uh, is just so useful. Uh, a lot of these t style of cameras, the front uh, lens standard will have those movements but the back standard might be fixed or it might have minimal movements but uh, it's great design they, they gave a lot of movements on both standards uh, not only do you have rise and fall and tilt but you also have swing on the back so if we loosen this I can uh, swing it left and right don't really use that too often because I just don't have much need to and the front not only does it have swing like the back you can swing it and actually quite a bit more than the back. It also has left and right slide. So it's just endless, endless movements. And when it comes to a camera like this, that's what you need. You need a lot of movements because that's half the point of using these cameras. Um, but it's very well built. The metal is good quality. The wood seems to be good quality. I haven't had any problems with it, no rust or anything, uh, knock on wood. 
uh, but well built and fantastic design. But the design is basically a knockoff of um, an Ebony brand camera. Uh, they released a 6x17 camera, it's basically the identical design, and then Shenhao kind of uh, created their own knockoff of it. That makes it actually quite a bit cheaper. But um, it's a beautiful camera, it offers everything I need, and uh, it's just one of the best investments I've made in my photography, hands down. It was a huge investment, but it was a worthwhile investment. On the back side here, uh, I'm going to pull the little protector off for the ground glass. And if you've ever used a uh, 4x5, 8x10, 11x14 view camera, any of those, it's going to look a little funky to you. I know what it did the first time I saw it. Seeing such a long, skinny piece of ground glass is kind of unusual. But um, that's, of course, to accommodate the uh, panoramic format. And uh, the film is put into the camera through a, a roll film back. So uh, I got that in its own little case here. And this roll film back uses 120 film. And you'll see it's a relatively compact item. If we pull off the back side here, we got the, um, the film uh, roll here, and then you put in your new film on this side and pull it across, and then uh, you clamp it back together. It's got a little window, so you can see the numbers on the film. And you only get four pictures per roll when you're doing 6x17, so you have to line it up with numbers 3, 6, 9, and 12 uh, using the manual crank here. Dark slide's kind of interesting because it's so long and skinny, so you pull that out when you're ready to expose. But the way this goes on to the camera is this ground glass has to come off and this has to go on. So after you've composed your picture and placed your filters and all that, you lift these little tabs here this swings down and um, there's little tabs down at the bottom here that allow you to drop this in. So you drop it in, secure it down, pull out the, the dark slide and uh, then you'll be able to expose. But this piece alone, this um, this roll film back is so well built, it's just rock solid. And I've never had light leaks. That was the number one thing I was worried about when I got this camera is that it wouldn't be very well sealed and you get a lot of light leaks. But it seals really well to the camera back. It's very well sealed itself, so um, haven't had any issues with that yet. But uh, four pictures per roll, so panoramic photography can get a little bit pricey sometimes. That's why I don't bracket. It's a waste of film, waste of money. All right, so then that brings us to lenses and all the other accessories. But let me just rack this down so I can put it away here. And you'll notice it's not a folding design. So it doesn't fold down, which makes it so it's not as compact as it could be. But by not folding, I get much more flexibility on the movements. So on this model, they kind of opted instead of uh, being able to fold down, there's many more movements available on the uh, lens and film standards. And for me, that was more important than being able to fold down. Because after all, it fits perfectly in this backpack, I don't need it to fold. So lenses. First here I got my Nikkor 150mm uh, f5.6. And uh, this is a great lens, it's kind of like a normal focal length for 6x17, not real zoomed in, not real wide. Compact lens, which I love. Um, and I picked this up at a photo swap meet for like 200 bucks, which is awesome. It's a sharp lens and it's like $200. You can't buy anything for $200. Um, gotta love old film gear. Super cheap these days. Um, the main thing with lenses when it comes to 6x17 is they have to have a big enough image circle to cover the entire negative. Because uh, like this is a 4x5 lens, but 4x5 isn't big enough to cover the um, 6x17 negative. So I made sure it had a real big image circle, plenty of room to fit that full 6x17 negative inside without getting any vignetting. So all my lenses, I, I made sure to check the specs so that the image circle is big enough. Next up, I got my 300 millimeter, also made by Nikon. So the Nikkor 300 millimeter, uh, maximum aperture of f9. So it's not a real wide maximum aperture. Uh, so it's not real bright, but as far as lenses go, 
I love this lens. This is my favorite lens I have right now because um, one of the things I've been having so much fun with on panoramic photography is dealing with layers and stuff that's way off in the distance. I feel like you see so many just epic wide angle panoramics with some huge foreground and all the stuff in the distance gets kind of neglected. And uh, so I've been doing mostly uh, 300 millimeter panoramics lately. Uh, I really like the compression it creates and uh, it brings in stuff that's real far away for me. So great lens. Then I got my wide angles. So first up I got a uh, Schneider 72 millimeter uh, Super Angulon 5.6 and this is ultra ultra wide. It's so wide um, and it's an expensive lens. It's a sharp lens. Truth be told I haven't used this lens nearly as much as I thought I would simply because I have gravitated more towards those longer focal length compressed pictures. But this is great when you're doing kind of your traditional panoramic landscape with the super epic foreground and tons of sky and all that. This can really pull in a super, super wide view. Hence, super angular. My other wide angle I actually prefer is my Nikon Nikkor SW 90 millimeter. Maximum aperture of 4.5, so that's a pretty wide aperture for a lens this uh, this wide angle. Uh, so pretty bright wide angle lens uh, makes composing a little bit easier. But you see, that makes the lens pretty big. That and the Schneider, they're both very big lenses. Uh, wide angle lenses tend to get pretty big on these um, larger formats. But uh, 90 millimeters is such an awesome focal length for 6 by 17. It's not too wide, but it's it's plenty wide for most scenes. Um, sometimes that 72 millimeter lens is so wide, it's just, it's too much. I, I can't, it's just pulling in everything. I feel like I'm getting a 180 degree field of view and it's hard to get a good composition that way. But this is nice, a little more zoomed in, um, real usable focal length, and the filter thread is actually usable. It's, only, it's an 82 millimeter filter thread. So uh, definitely a very usable lens, very sharp lens. Uh, I do use filters in my photography quite often, uh, and I use the Lee filter system. So just the standard Lee foundation with a 52 millimeter adapter ring to fit my 150 millimeter lens and my 300 millimeter lens. But when it comes to the uh, Schneider and the um, wide angle Nikon, the 90 millimeter. So on wide angle lenses like this, they're so wide angle that you get a lot of light fall off in the corners. It's just a physics problem with uh, trying to spread uh, an image that wide. It starts to get dark around the edges. So they make center ND filters. And center ND filters are neutral density only in the center. So you may be able to see that. It's kind of dark just right in the center. And um, this one's for my 90 millimeter. So if I put this on my 90 millimeter, then uh, it evens out the exposure so I don't get that uh, light fall off at the edges and then I get a nice even exposure across the whole picture. And cable release there. Uh, I also have one for the Schneider. So you see also neutral density in the middle. And um, throw that on again, I get even exposure on the 72. But there's one big problem with using these center ND filters. And that is the front filter thread gets so big that the Lee holder doesn't work anymore. There's no adapter ring. So me being me, I felt that wasn't good enough. I'm going to figure out a way to attach this to those lenses. So what I did is I took some uh, Lee filter holder holders and basically ground down the back and made them super thin and then kind of built this sleeve uh, out of a product called Sugru, which is this moldable putty. It's kind of like Play-Doh, but then it hardens to, uh, to rubber. And um, this works great. I designed it to basically slip over the center ND filter. And uh, this took a lot of experimenting, a lot of trial and error, but uh, it works so well. It just fits like a glove right over the center ND filter and then I can use my two, uh, two filters. Split ND, maybe a neutral density, maybe a polarizer. Also made one for the uh, other center ND. So again, I had to take a Lee filter uh, system and kind of um, cannibalize it. Do a little Frankenstein style thing here. Uh, with Sugru and a Lee filter holder. And that slips over the uh, center ND filter on my 72. So they're pretty weird looking. I definitely wouldn't call them elegant, but uh, they really get the job done. They allow me to use filters on a lens 
where normally you wouldn't really be able to use filters because the front is just too dang big. Uh, got my cable release, of course, good quality one. These things break pretty easily if you get the cheap ones, so you want to get a good one. Got my filters, uh, all my Lee filters. Have maybe uh, eight to ten filters in here, ranging from split neutral densities, polarizers, uh, colored filters, red 23A for black and white, yellow for black and white, and then uh, got some warming filters in here somewhere too. But uh, I love the Lee system. I think it's the best out there. And uh, I took the filter wallet and put this little carabiner on it so that I could attach it to my belt, and my filters are always right next to me. Good idea. Uh, Light meter, probably one of my most important tools. Uh, and this is a reflected light meter, not an incident light meter. And I know a lot of people gravitate towards incident light meters because, to put it bluntly, they're super easy to use. Uh, you give a mon monkey an incident light meter and he'll figure out an exposure for you. But uh, there's a big problem with incident light meters, which is they give you a technically perfect exposure, but that doesn't mean it's a correct exposure. Um, you gotta be a little more flexible than simply going with what the meter tells you. But the other big problem with incident light meters is they can't read things that are far away. So if you have a mountain range off in the distance with that beautiful alpen glow on it, but you're in the shadow of the valley, you're under different light than the mountains are. So if you try and do an incident light meter reading just right in front of you, uh, you're not gonna get the right exposure for the mountains. So spot meters allow you to read anything no matter how far away it is. So that's why I prefer spot meters. But uh, this digital spot meter is exactly the same one that uh, Ansel Adams used. So if you've read his book, The Negative, uh, he talks about um, using one of these light meters. And uh, super simple, very uh, easy, not a lot of moving parts, and um, just an awesome light meter. One of those things I hope is going to last me a long, 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 long time, because they don't make them anymore, and I love the simple design. Um, other accessories, got a level, got my uh, loop. My loop is made by Silvestri, and uh, it's a 6X loop. This is for focusing on the ground glass. That's why you have a lanyard around it, so you can keep it around your neck. Uh, and then the camera doesn't use batteries, which is great, but the uh, light meter does use batteries, so i got to carry an extra battery with me for that. So that's everything. Uh, if you have any questions about it or want to know more, leave a message in the comments, and uh, I'll try and get back to you. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.